uh, we do not advise any of our sellers to ever take a deal with no earnest money. Hey there, everyone. Dave Barlow here with the gang from Sell for 1%. We got Jay DeBomb Barlow, and we have Jay Amarinsky Barlow as well. And uh, we're doing our term of the week. And this term affects both sides, buyer and seller, differently. And the term is earnest money, or AKA good faith earnest money deposit. And sellers are going to look at it from one direction. Buyers are going to look at it from a different direction. And so we're going to have, uh, Jay, if you will talk a little bit about the importance of earnest money to our sellers. Yeah. So if on the seller side of things, when we get an offer and we're going through the terms of the offer and I'm breaking down, you know, what you're going to net and then what all the different things in here mean, one of the paragraphs in the standard contract is the buyer's earnest money deposit. They are earnestly in good faith trying to buy the house. Here's a deposit that says that, hey, we're trying in good faith to show you that they're serious. When you look at the contract in, in Columbus on in our market, this is not like a deposit that you make with a new bill where, you know, if you don't close, you, you lose the money. The way that the deposit in Columbus works is if the buyer uh, terminates because of home inspection, if the buyer terminates because financing falls apart. Uh, I've had situations where we're waiting for a closing and our buyer gets killed in a motorcycle accident, had a house burned down before, we, it was contingent on a home sale, and that house burns down. In those situations, the buyer gets the deposit back. Okay, so the point for the seller is not that I'm going to hold your feet to the fire and I'm going to get this money from you. Uh, it, it's pretty customary in our market that the deposit's a thousand bucks. And again, if you're doing a new build, it's like five percent. It's it's a it's substantial. Ours is is again more to show good faith. Um, but what I have learned over the years with my sellers is anytime a buyer has a no earnest money deposit, they are at a much higher likelihood to have a, a contract terminate for whatever the reason is, whether it's a legitimate reason, like I was saying earlier, where they died, or they just change their mind. And I, and I know that freaks sellers out when I tell them that can happen. So when we get an offer, if it has zero dollars in earnest money, you're getting a counter, uh, period. Um, I, I We do not advise any of our sellers to ever take a deal with no earnest money. And, and again, it's for the reasons I've told you just a minute ago. If we get to, we're off the market for 20 days, 30 days, and we get to day before closing, and I have had this happen, the buyer says, I'm out, I'm not buying it. Sorry, changed my mind, payment's too high, whatever it is, you have nothing. There's nothing to go get. And interestingly enough, even when it's just 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, mentally, the buyers, they don't do that. They don't try and back out. Uh, by the time we get to that level, they've paid 600 bucks for a home inspection, 600 bucks for an appraisal. They've got $1,000 in earnest money. Just mentally, they're, they're married to us. And I know it doesn't seem like 1000 bucks does that, uh, but it does. And, and I'll let Jamie take it from the buyer side because I, I think that I found a similar phenomenon on the buyer side in my career too. Yes. Earnest money is the walk the walk clause, as I like to say it. Uh, you can write up a contract for a million dollars, no inspection, and then, you know, 5,000 earnest money deposit. Till you deposit that, that earnest money, you're just talking the talk. Once you deposit the earnest money, you're walking the walk. State law says for any termination of a contract in real estate in the real estate transaction being terminated, there has to be a mutual release signed by both parties, buyer and seller to release that earnest money deposit. So I have buyers all the time worried about earnest money and it's it's a clause that if you are planning to buy the house and are earnestly trying it's you're not going to have an issue if you have a bad home inspection and you find the house has fallen apart you can terminate per the contract and then the seller will have to sign a mutual release form with your signature to release that money if you get to a week before closing and decide you don't like the payment and for no contractual reason back out of the contract, that's where you can lose earnest money. That's where a seller wants earnest money 
And that's where a mutual release is also important. If the seller signs a mutual release and you terminate because you didn't like the payment and not a contractual reason, if the seller signs, that money can be released to you, but we cannot release that money to you. So again, like Jason said, if you're earnestly trying to buy the house, $1,000 within three days of acceptance, you deposit that, it stays in a trust account and a third party account until the day of closing where then it's released to you and either put towards the, the purchase of the house, back in your pocket, whatever you would like to do with it. But it is the walk the walk clause because the contract is talk the talk and everybody can agree to terms. The earnest money, you're walking that walk because you're putting money where your mouth is there. So let yeah. me, from a broker's position and we manage the trust account here at sell for 1%. Uh, the trust account is a separate bank account. It's a special bank account, non-interest bearing, that when a buyer writes a good faith earnest money check, that money's deposited into that separate account held there until the time of closing. Or if there is a termination for some reason, that as Jamie and uh, Jay also mentioned, uh, uh, there needs to be a mutual release and mutual meaning both sides, both buyer and seller have to agree who's going to get that money. And if the buyer and seller cannot agree, then that deposit money is held in the trust account until one of two things happen. Uh, first is that either buyer or seller sues the other side, depending on the amount of money being held most of the time, it's a small claims court, and we have to have a judgment written by a judge or a magistrate through the small claims court that says this money is to be released to buyer or seller. The other thing that would happen is if the money sits there for two years in the trust account, uh, at the end of the two years, the brokerage would then turn the money over to um, the Ohio Unclaimed Funds Division, and then somebody's going to have to make a claim there to try to, to get that money. So it's not as simple as the purchase contract says, well, if you have a bad home inspection, we can terminate, we can get our money back. There's language in the contract that, that alludes to that, but state law says both buyer and seller have to agree who gets the money. And once we have that agreement, then uh, the money's released to uh, one of the other parties and everybody goes happily ever after. Most of the time, there's a legitimate reason that, you know, we weren't able to close and the sellers generally are reasonable and will release the money back to the buyer. Um, I just had a situation where we were in contract. I was representing the seller the buyer basically 10 days into the contract said, yeah, I'm just not happy with this. I want to terminate. We sent them a mutual release. Uh, it was a fairly substantial amount of money, more than a thousand bucks. And the buyer signed it because they knew they were in the wrong. They didn't have any right to kill the deal. And so a check is being sent to uh, my seller uh, for the deposit money. So again, you have to have that mutual release. All right, guys. Well, thank you for uh, the information. A lot of good information. It's a question that comes up all the time. Both buyer and sellers want to know what's this for? How's it going to be used? So on and so forth. Um, and you guys gave some good information there. So thank you. Be sure to like and subscribe and click on that uh, bell as we put up additional information. You'll get a notice that says, hey, Here's some new information from guys who have been doing this. I've been doing it 25 years. Jay's going on 20. Jamie, you're heading into year number six. Uh, but a wealth of knowledge here. And if you have any questions, feel free to call any of us. We'd love to be able to talk to you, help you through your home buying or home selling process. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you sometime next week with our next term of the week, week, week.